It looks like most people have checked on. So how about if I say good morning now and, and we can get going. Yeah. Um, as Nan posted in the Facebook or the invite page on the email, today's uh, Pentecost, a uh, feast of the spirit arriving, and some call it the birthday of the church. And it's also called Wit Sunday, which I bet Brian could explain to us better than I could represent. Brian, what's Wit Sunday? Well, good question. Uh, <laughs> I think it is uh, something to do with white, even though liturgically we wear red now. Yeah. I always understood that it's that uh, Whit Sunday over in Europe is called that because it's the great day to have people baptized and they wear the white and receive the spirit and become part of the church that day. It's an old tradition, I believe. So we'll stick with Pentecost, one of the um, probably the least celebrated of the three big days, but I'm so glad we're all here together today. And um, why don't we ask Ray to lead us into service together to celebrate the spirit. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, <coughs> in the glory of God <coughs> the Father. Amen. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> the Lord be with you. <coughs> and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, on this day you opened the way of eternal life to every race and nation by the promised gift of your Holy Spirit. Shed abroad this gift throughout the world by the preaching of the gospel that it may reach to the ends of the earth through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Good? Yep. Today's first reading is from Ezekiel. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out, of the, out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O oh Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, O oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you and will cause flesh to come upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded, and as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews upon them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy mortal, and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet a vast multitude. Then he said to me, mortal, these bones are a whole house of Israel. They say, our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy and say to them, thus says, and, and say to them, thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves. O my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves. O my people, I will put my spirit within you and you shall live. And I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
I don't see Darcy as um, listed in the participants. Could somebody please uh, read the psalm if they have a copy of it, please? I can do it, Martha. Thank you so much, Nan. <clears throat> this is a reading from Psalm 104. Send forth your spirit, O Lord, and renew the face of the earth. O Lord, how manifold are your works. In the wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the great and wide sea with its living things too many to number, creatures both great and small. There move the ships and there is the, the, that Levithian which you have made for the sport of it. All of them look to you to give them their food in due season. You give it to them, they gather it. You open your hand and they are filled with good things. You hide your face and they are terrified. You take away their breath and they die and return to the dust. You send forth your spirit and they are created and so you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in all his works. He looks at the earth and it trembles. He touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live, I will give praise. I will praise my God while I have my being. May these words of mine please him. I will rejoice in the Lord. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Hallelujah. Our second reading is from Acts. When the day of the Pentecost had come, the disciples were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. At this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all of these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language, Parthians, Midis, Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. Now this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy, and your young men will see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious days. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh, my. 
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said to his disciples, when the advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the spirit of truth who comes from the Father, he will testify on my behalf. You also are to testify because you have been with me from the beginning. I did not say these things to you from the beginning because I was with you, but now I am going to him who sent me. Yet none of you asks me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your hearts. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will prove the world wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. About sin, because they do not believe in me. About righteousness, because I am going to the Father and you will see me no longer. About judgment, because the ruler of this world has been condemned. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason, I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. As we approach the edges of this pandemic, I find myself recalling how it was just a few months ago. To be honest, the lifting of restrictions the return of familiar activities is a bit disorienting. I've become quite comfortable hiding behind my mask in this rectangle. So in this transition, I find myself reflecting on the near past as a way to locate myself in the present. Standing between these worlds, these realities, and looking back to survey where we've been, I feel a bit like Ezekiel in today's reading peering across the valley of recent history now scattered with the bones of lifeless structures, bodiless spaces. Those empty classrooms, echoing sanctuaries, dusty altars will slowly be reacquainted with their previous occupants, with their previous uses. And slowly my body will be drawn out from behind the screen and reminded of what it is like to brush against another. 
but for now we stand in between, surveying our structures in their bony states. What does it say about our lives that so much continued without the fullness of bodies? What does it say about school that we claim a year of learning without the physical presence of one another? What does it say about industries who thrived in a time of disconnect? What does it say about church if we don't feel the hungry ache for a shared table? As we consider leaving behind the asphyxiating existence of this pandemic, I wonder if we will hear the prophetic invitations of these bones. A year ago, George Floyd begged for air. I can't breathe. His cry for breath against the knee of government force was not the first, nor sadly the last. But for some reason, the country and the world seemed to listen to him a little more closely than those that came before. Why? Is it because at this time last year, we were all paying close attention to our own lungs? anxious that if we couldn't catch a full breath, we might die? Is it because being more acquainted with the vulnerability of our own bodies, we were able to see it in others? Or is it because after three months of obscuring numbers and graphs charting deaths, we needed to hold on to a face? We needed to know one of the numbers lost. Or perhaps, simply, George Floyd's death was enough. I don't know, but I am grateful that something in that moment, I'm grateful that lost breath, that stolen life spoke to us and moved us to open ourselves up to hope and dream of something more. I'm grateful that we saw the absence of breath and were moved to work for a world where all people are allowed to breathe. I'm grateful that we saw a body pressed against the pavement and moved our feet across miles of pavement a gathering of bodies bringing life to skeletal streets. We saw the bones of oppression and we responded with action. I guess I'm wondering if the other breathless moments and lifeless spaces of this pandemic might also lead to reflective transformation. As we return to familiar routines, can we, will we peer back and consider the skeletal structures that arrange our lives? Will we mark the articulate systems that maintain a semblance of order, but have little space for living, breathing bodies? Can these bones live? Oh Lord God, you know. There is a lot of work to do to ready these bones for life, for breath. These bones scattered by individualizing forces of sterile institutions must come back together. These faces broken apart into their own rectangles must return to one another. These bodies learning, praying, eating, breathing in isolation must find each other again. We must return to the work of community. And these bones once together they need flesh, they need flesh. These faces need laughter. These ears need song. These bodies need dance. We need to be wrapped in the sinews of sensuality, in the fleshiness of presence, in the skin of movement and embrace. We must return to tending to one another, allowing the inherent vulnerability of our bodies to create moments of giving and receiving. And when we have come together, when we have embraced an embodied existence as on the day of Pentecost, into the space, the Holy Spirit moves, breathing through the gathered, through us, a sound like the rush of a violent wind, tongues of fire resting. The Holy Spirit works through anticipating subjects, speaking a healing and transforming grace that reaches further than we can comprehend. Upon this crowd, the spirit pours dreams and visions of righteousness enacted. Into the space, the spirit sends gospel tongues of belonging. This is not a generalizing force. 
that dismisses the specific gifts and needs of each person. No, the spirit breathes a diverse array of fiery tongues resting on each individual, celebrating the complexity of difference. Here, the spirit looks upon a divided world and sighs a central embrace of love that draws us together. The spirit feels the ache of lifeless bones, hears the gasps of hope, and hums the fiery rhythm of life-giving dance, moving the crowd to an intoxicating sway of hopeful justice. So they're dancing at nine o'clock in the morning. So I guess my question is, are we ready to dance? Are we ready for the Holy Spirit to fill us? As this pandemic lays bare the dry bones of our lives, as a year without physical presence points to the lifeless systems that have existed far too long, as the pandemic threatens our own physicality and draws us to more deeply consider ongoing threats to marginalized bodies, as communion tables sit empty, speaking to a larger hunger for justice, will we let the spirit move? Will we desire the presence of one another? Will we embrace the, sh the belonging of shared vulnerabilities? When we return to the table, will we voraciously enact an eschatological dream of justice? Dear ones, in this Pentecostal shift, may we mark the lifeless bones. May we return to the embrace of one another. May we be open to the breath of the Holy Spirit. May we allow fiery tongues to rest upon us and speak of righteous grace. May we sway in celebration of one another's testifying presence. May this living body be moved. Amen. I invite you to turn to page 358 if you have your Book of Common Prayer and let us affirm our beliefs in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the, the Father, Father, the Almighty, Almighty maker of heaven and earth, earth of all, all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sin. We, we look for the, the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. A prayer from St. Augustine of Hippo, A.D. 354 through 430. Breathe in me, O Holy Spirit, that my thoughts may all be holy. Act in me, O Holy Spirit, that my works, too, may be holy. Draw my heart, O Holy Spirit, that I love. But what is holy? Strengthen me, O Holy Spirit, to defend that is holy. Guard me then, O Holy Spirit, 
that I always may be holy. Edward Bouvier Pusey, AD 1800 through 80, 1882. Good Jesu, fountain of love, fill me with thy love, absorb me into thy love, compass me with thy love, that I may see all things in the light of thy love, receive all things as tokens of thy love, speak of all things in words breathing of thy love, when through thy love others to thy love, be kindled day by day with a new glow of thy love, until I be fitted to enter into thine everlasting love to adore thy love and love to adore thee, my God and my all. Even so, come Lord Jesu. So a bus driver went to a church for the first time and sat in the first row. After the sermon, the pastor went to the man and asked him why he sat sat in the front row alone. Well, the driver said, I just sat up here to see what you did to make everyone move to the back. The prayers of the people for this Sunday of Pentecost is on page 385, form two. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world. For our bishop, search for a new bishop, search for a priest at St. James. For this gathering and for all ministers and people. Pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry the oppressed, and those in prison. Pray for those in any need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of God. Pray that they may find and be found by him. I ask your prayers for the departed, especially the souls of the fireman Ricardo Torres and our loved brother from Emmanuel Church, Jonathan Bush. Pray for those who have died. At this time, I will add prayers. Let us have prayers for Susie Burks, who is a dear friend of ours who has been placed into hospice care. For all caregivers, especially Helen and Rosemary, and Judy and Laura. For the Torres family struggling with their grief. Continued recovery prayers for Lieutenant Samad Rankin who was the other firefighter. For those struggling, struggling with addiction, abuse, mental health, loneliness, isolation, with COVID and cancer. For the victims of gun violence and those who cause such violence. Anne would like us to pray for her cousin, Robert Wright, 
Christ, who has recently passed. We give thanksgivings and blessings for those celebrating birthdays and anniversaries this week, especially my dad for his 85th birthday on Thursday. For our wonderful cluster network, Churches of St. James and St. Andrews and Emmanuel. We also give thanks and blessings for our children and for our pets and those that we share our life together with. We give thanks also, almighty God, we give thanks so much for all that we are and all that we can be. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored, especially the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints who we remember today. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our, all, in our own day. A prayer from the Presbyterian Book of Common Worship. God of power, may the boldness of your spirit transform us. May the gentleness of your spirit lead us. May the gifts of your spirit be our goal and our strength now and always. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, you kindled this day the light of your spirit into the hearts of your faithful people. Hear now and receive our prayers. And may we, by the same spirit, have a right judgment in all things and evermore rejoice in your love and power through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. My dear friends in Christ, may the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. you give me a whole pump. <laughs> We are the children of God. So God has sent the spirit into our hearts and we now offer ourselves back to God. We'll be using the Eucharistic prayer. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks and praise to God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. In fulfillment of his true promise, the Holy Spirit came down on this day from heaven, lighting upon the disciples to teach them and to lead them into all truth, uniting peoples of many tongues in confession of one faith and giving to your church the power to serve you as a royal priesthood and to preach the gospel to all nations. Therefore, with people of every nation, tribe, and language, with the whole church on earth and in heaven, joyfully we give you thanks and say, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All glory and honor to you, God of grace. For you gave your only son, Jesus Christ, once for all on the cross, to be the one perfect sacrifice for the sin of the world, that all who believe in him might have eternal life. And on the night before he died, he took bread. And when he had given you thanks, he broke it and he gave it to his disciples. And he said to them, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this and remember me. And after supper with his disciples, he took the cup. And when he had given you thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. And as often as you drink it, remember me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, in recalling the suffering and death of your son, we now celebrate the wonder of your grace and we proclaim the mystery of our faith as we say, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. 
Redeemer God, rich in mercy, infinite in goodness, we were far off until you brought us near, and our hands are empty until you fill them. As we pray together this day through the power of your Holy Spirit, feed us with your heavenly food, renew us in your service, unite us in Christ, and bring us to your everlasting kingdom. All this we ask for from you and through you and for you are all things. To you be the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now as our Savior has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Dearest Jesus, we believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. And we love you above all things, and we desire to receive you into our souls. Since we cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into our hearts. We embrace you, and we know that you are already there as we unite ourselves completely to you. Never permit us to be separated from you, and let us serve you in this life until by your grace, we come to your glorious kingdom and unending peace. Amen. We draw together today followers, and followers of Christ in remembrance that he did die for us. Let us take a quiet moment now to feed on him in our hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, Send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. May the Spirit who hovered over the waters when the world was created Breathe into you the life he gives. May the spirit who overshadowed the Virgin when the eternal Son came among us make you joyful in the service of the Lord. May the spirit who filled the church upon the day of Pentecost bring the world alive with the love of the risen Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen.
let the sun of God enfold you with his spirit and his love. Let him fill your heart and satisfy your soul. Oh, let him have the things that hold you and his spirit like a dove will descend upon your life Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia. alleluia.